back. Now, warning, some viewers might find the next topic a little distressing, but it's something we absolutely must be discussing as a community. It's too important to ignore. And frankly, if this was happening in Melbourne or Sydney, it would be front page news. I'm going to read to you two Sky News headlines from the last two days. First one, NT man who raped 12-year-old girl causing her to become pregnant, eligible for parole less than four months after he's convicted of the offence. And this, NT teenager who raped seven-year-old girl while on parole for arson to be released less than two months after being convicted. Now, I've asked our Northern Territory reporter Matt Cunningham on the program to discuss these two stories. Matt, how can such horrific crimes see such lenient sentences? Well, that's probably a question a lot of people are asking, um, Rita, and I think you're right when you say that these are horrific crimes. I mean, the details of these two offences, um, I think, would shock any Australian uh, if they uh, read what had been uh, delivered in the judge's sentencing remarks into these two cases. In one case, you've got uh, a seven-year-old girl who was raped uh, by a 16-year-old male, um, and that obviously had a devastating impact on her, according to her victim Im impact statement and the victim impact statement uh, of her mother and her father. It took a girl who was uh, quite bright and bubbly and energetic and has made her into basically a, a recluse, someone uh, who's now afraid to go outside. Uh, in the case uh, of the other girl, uh, perhaps even more shocking, Rita, this is a 12-year-old girl who was raped in a community outside Side Tennant Creek. Now, the incident happened in 2017, but the man, the perpetrator, uh, was sentenced for this incident only three and a half months ago. Uh, in this case, the 12-year-old girl uh, who was raped by the 23-year-old man fell pregnant. Uh, she was actually taken to the Alice Springs Hospital by uh, her biological mother and two carers. Uh, those three women, while they were at the Royal, uh, at, at the Alice Springs Hospital, convinced a doctor not to perform an abortion, saying they would look after uh, this 12-year-old girl and her unborn baby. One of the carers later took uh, a Centrelink carer's allowance and yet provided no care to that girl, according um, to the reports. She was then placed in the care of an uncle who basically did the same thing, took the money from Centrelink but provided oh, no. her with no care. In the end, uh, it was the people working at the clinic uh, in that community who ended up providing food and shelter um, for that 12-year-old girl. Just shocking cases, and you read about the case of the offender who raped that seven-year-old child, and his own story is harrowing and, and heartbreaking, but it it's, can't be an excuse for what he inflicted on, on a defenceless child. And you just fear that this cycle of abuse is going to continue and, and there's going to be no meaningful improvement for these kids. Well, Jacinta Price made exactly that point yesterday when she was speaking to James Morrow and she said, and, and she's obviously been campaigning on this issue, well, certainly for as long as I've known her and for a long time before she entered uh, the federal parliament, but she's saying until we end this domestic and family violence, we're not going to see an end uh, to these sorts of issues. So that 16-year-old child that you're talking about, um, according to the court documents, he suffered from extreme PTSD because of the horrendous mm. abuse, uh, domestic violence that he'd seen his father inflict on his mother. Now, as you say, none of this is an excuse for that horrific offence. The rape of a seven-year-old uh, girl, I don't think anyone could excuse under any circumstances. Um, but when you're looking at the environment in which these kids are growing up, uh, this child, uh, this 16-year-old, he's 18 now, uh, had been referred several times to the Child Protection Department because uh, of the abuse that his father had meted out against his mother and then the alcohol abuse um, that his mother had been involved in. He also suffered from fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. So, you know, these are just shocking um, incidents and yet... And I somehow, you know, they're allowed to continue to occur. I've been having this conversa these conversations with, um, you know, people on programs like this, uh, Rita, uh, for nearly seven years, but not a lot changes. Malcolm Turnbull, when he was Prime Minister, went to Tennant Creek in 2018 after the horrific mm. rape of a two-year-old child. Well, you know, we see um, just through these cases, you know, two now that we've reported in the matter of two days, uh, you can see it's not an isolated incident and yet nothing seems to change. 
And if it was happening in Melbourne and Sydney, I think it would be leading the news service uh, for a week and uh, it, would, it would be getting the sort of coverage crimes like this deserve. And shouldn't we, Matt, as Jacinda Price said, be focusing on doing something about this instead of worrying about amending our constitution or changing Australia Day? Well, that, you know, that's an interesting point you raise. I mean, I, I know a lot of Aboriginal people here in the Northern Territory who would like to see the date of Australia Day changed because they don't believe that, um, you know, it, it's a day that they can celebrate. I know a lot of Aboriginal people from the Northern Territory um, who want to see a voice to Parliament. I know a lot of also who are opposed to the idea of a voice to Parliament. One thing I would say is that if we devoted as much time speaking about issues like this, the domestic and family violence... I mean, just last week, the Northern Territory Police Commissioner revealed that police had responded to 97 domestic and family violence incidents in the Northern Territory, a place with a population of 250,000 people, in just one day. Now, if we devoted as much time speaking about some of those issues as we do speak speaking about changing the date of Australia Day or an Indigenous voice to Parliament, then maybe, perhaps, Rita, something might change. But how can we elevate these issues? To, to, I mean, we'll talk about it on this program, we'll talk about it on Sky News, but it seems so many people, Matt, are terrified to actually even broach this subject because there can be blowback, and you've experienced that yourself, by just reporting, not even giving commentary or opinion, by just reporting some of these cases, uh, you can get attacked for uh, being seen as, I don't know... Uh, Racist. I mean, I don't know how you could possibly be racist if you care about the plight of Indigenous kids, but th that does happen with some of the activists. Well, there's all sorts of, you know, absurd commentary that happens on Twitter, as you know, Rita. I mean, I'm not too worried mm. about that. I, I actually think there has recently been a, a something of a shift. We've seen two women come into the federal parliament, both Jacinta Price and Labor's Marion Scrimger, who used their maiden speeches to highlight the issue of domestic and family violence. We saw Four Corners recently devote an entire episode um, to the family and domestic violence uh, and the deaths that Aboriginal women uh, have suffered at the hands of their male partners. So I think there has been something of a turning point in the past six months about uh, how this country goes about confronting this issue. It's a difficult issue to talk about, there's no doubt about that, but I think it's one that we need to talk about. Um, something needs to be changed because at the moment too many True, lives, Matt, being but I, too I many think... lives are being lost. Uh, Absolutely. And you know what? Uh, we've run out of time tonight, but we will come back to this because it's too important not to cover adequately. And when you've got Indigenous women 30 times more likely to be hospitalised due to domestic violence than non-Indigenous women, then there's something terribly wrong.